So in light of recent events that happened out here in Fort Lauderdale with some rain and some flooding, I've been getting a lot of questions, a lot of concerns from those of you that were thinking of moving down here and you're asking me, is this normal and where do I go from here? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Welcome to Living for Lauderdale, where we make videos weekly about what it's like to move to or live in the Fort Lauderdale area. So if that's what you're looking for, make sure to subscribe. And I am a licensed realtor here in Florida, so just as much as I love making these videos, I love even more to help you with your real estate needs, whether that's buying or selling. If you're planning a move down here, you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you, but with that being said, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the rain and the flooding in Fort Lauderdale and what it's really like. So I apologize in advance if you see me swatting over here because, again, I picked a great area to film. I came to this park where it's still partially flooded. Um, there's a lot of like bugs around here, so I apologize. But just to put your mind at ease a little bit, I've been getting the question, is what we've seen this last week normal in Fort Lauderdale? And can I expect this to happen frequently when I move down here? And the answer is, no, what we just saw is not normal. But yes, you can expect to see flooding down here. And, and let me explain what I mean. So if you haven't seen the news, which I'm sure you have if you're probably watching this video, we just got 26 inches of rain in a 24 hour period, which is a one in 1000 storm. So just to explain what that means, that means a storm of this magnitude happens once every thousand or so years. 600 people were displaced from their homes. I mean, the entire airport was shut down. I'll, you know, I'll be showing some clips and some footage from the news throughout this video, but the entire airport was shut down. The whole bottom level was pretty much unusable as you know, water was coming into the terminal. Uh, the entire tarmac was underwater. There was cars floating out by the airport. So this was just a really historical storm that you should not expect to see happen frequently. Now, just to give you some insight as to why we do see flooding down here in Fort Lauderdale, well, the city is at a moderate risk of flooding due to the fact that we're pretty much at sea level. We're about nine feet above sea level. We're surrounded by water and we're in a tropical climate. And I live in probably the northernmost part of the city that you can get in. And I didn't really see that much flooding here outside of, you know, some of the streets being a little flooded out. But I'm gonna show you a map so you can see where a majority of that flooding occurred. And, and this typically tends to be the part of the city that just is more prone to flooding in general. Now, as you can see by this map, a lot of it is in the southwestern part of the city. This is also the oldest part of the city. And the reality is, is that Fort Lauderdale's infrastructure is, is just old and it's in need of updating. So in recent, in, when I was doing my research for this video, I came across an article from October of 2022 that the city had planned a major project to upgrade the, uh, the, the plumbing system, or not the plumbing system, but the pumps for, you know, storms like this, of this magnitude where they're gonna run pumps underground that is gonna take the excess water and push it out to the canals. And they're doing it in phases and they're actually starting or planning to start in that area that got hit the hardest, which is like the River Oaks and Edgewood neighborhood. That, that area I'll show you on a map. And in the first phase of, of this project, they're planning to run about 20 miles of underground pumps just in this little area. And just to give you some context, 20 miles is about the distance between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. So that's just one small area. So we're hoping to see some improvements on this. I mean, it's long overdue, but as of October, before this article came out, the current system here was only built to handle about three inches of rain in a 24 hour period. So multiply that by eight and that's what we just saw. So 
to answer your question of if this is normal, that tells you right there. So what is normal flooding and rain look like here in the Fort Lauderdale area? Well, I can at least tell you what it looks like from my experience. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos that I have not seen a hurricane since I've been here. However, this was probably the closest thing to one. I mean, we did have fairly high winds. I don't think they got really above 30 miles per hour, but where the real damage came into play was the rain. So from my perspective of living out here for four years, what we'll typically see out here is over the summer, we get a lot of tropical storms every single day almost, uh, for the most part, and they last maybe an hour. Now, they're almost hurricane-like conditions, but they don't last very long. Now, will this cause some streets to flood out? Yes, but it's not gonna cause what we just saw happen. And something that you just have to know is that whether this storm happened or not, before you you know decided that you were maybe gonna move down here, nothing's changed. Fort Lauderdale's been the same. It's been a moderate risk of flooding, just due to the stuff that I mentioned earlier. The fact that we are at sea level, um, we, do, we are in a tropical climate, and we are surrounded by water, so nothing has changed. Now, the most recent thing we're seeing is the gas shortages. So, if you've seen on the news too, a lot of the fuel trucks have been, they, you know, the port was flooded, so they weren't able to get the gas from the port and fill up the gas stations. So now we're experiencing a lot of gas stations either closed or they're just being filled up now. So we're seeing lines down the street. We're seeing price gouging. This is something that I can say I've seen before here and in New Jersey. You know, in New Jersey, that famously happens every time there's a hurricane. You'll see gas shortages, you'll see price gouging. And even down here, I've seen it happen before. And it was something that had nothing to do with Florida. I remember it was a storm maybe a year ago that was hitting like South Carolina. And it caused a scare where the media said something about that there was gonna be a gas shortage due to this storm everywhere south of the Carolinas. So everybody in Florida, they, they decided to fill up their tanks all at the same time because of this rumor that there was gonna be a gas shortage. Well, there never was a gas shortage, but what we did see was everybody panicking and freaking out because of something they heard on the news. And in turn, that just caused the panic and the mayhem that we saw. Now, some advice when it comes to actually buying a home down here is just so you know, the entire city of Fort Lauderdale is not located in a flood zone or does not require mandatory flood insurance. So it's gonna be certain parts of the city and when it really boils down to it, it's gonna be property specific. So I can show you a flood map and you're not even gonna know what you're looking at from a distance because it's extremely confusing and it's very property specific. I've seen cases where one house will, will you know, be in one flood zone and then across the street and down the block, another house will be in a completely different flood zone. So it's very property specific. So when it comes to buying a home down here, just make sure that's one of your concerns in the beginning and you actually take notice of what flood zone you're in or if you're even in a flood zone before you, you, before you make that decision. Whereas if this storm never happened, that might not have even been something that crossed your mind. So all in all, I think the city's been doing a good job in, in trying to work on this. I mean, they got everything back up and running within a day after the um, this storm for the most part. So I think they're doing a pretty good job. They just need to upgrade their infrastructure a little bit because yes, we are in a moderate flood risk, but if you're still thinking of moving down here, or you still have questions, here's my number and email. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm happy to connect with you and answer any questions you may have.